Uh, thanks, guys. Welcome. Uh, based on our, our conversations before the class, right? I can tell that there's a lot of like energy and excitement, a lot of uh, like passion for this film. So I'm really looking forward to talking about it tonight with you. Uh, I've uh, I always give like our class like a little title, and usually it's a quote from the film. So our quote tonight is, "Don't be too proud of the technological terror you've constructed." Um, and I use that because in a lot of ways, uh, as I was thinking about our discussion or how I wanted to frame it tonight, uh, that was my, my start, starting point. Uh, so um, these are our topics. We're going to talk a little bit about technology uh, and all of its shapes and iterations in this film. Uh, I invite you to think about the technology in the movie, but also the technology behind the scenes involved in the production of the film. Um, and what I mean, you talk about the use of miniatures, or you can talk about the special editions and the addition of CGI. But I would like us to try to keep the conversation, uh, for the most part, grounded on A New Hope. Uh, because I think we've all seen the other movies. Some of us have seen the holiday special. Anyone? <laughs> Happy Life Day, Happy Life Day. Mala and Lumpy, all good stuff. Um, but if you could keep it focused on Star Wars A New Hope, I think uh, that would help ground uh, what we're talking about. Uh, you're totally free to make a connection to something else when appropriate, if you need. Uh, we'll talk about the Force. Uh, I really, I kind of see it as the anti-technology in this movie. We'll look at uh, the fears that are running underneath the film involving the Empire, technology, uh, the Sith, uh, and then hope, because the film is called A New Hope. This outfit is very warm. I'm just letting you all know that in advance. Uh, and we're thinking about what Star Wars says about film, culture, and technology. You know stuff about me. Uh, as you can see from my getup tonight, uh, I am a big Star Wars fan. Uh, I tried recently to think about what first attracted me to the films. I know that my father was really into it. He was into Star Trek as well. I know that my dad had some uh, expanded universe books. And I think I thought the covers always looked cool because they were the, the, that artistic like mashup kind of painting that they still use with a lot of the trail uh, posters. Um, this is me with Chewbacca. It's me as Chewbacca. And this is as you see me before you at a uh, five-year-old's birthday party dressed as uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. We went Peter Mayhew. Uh, it is actually not Peter Mayhew. But yes, uh, rest in peace, Peter Mayhew. All right, please. Yeah, all right, good guy. Um, OK, uh, if you didn't see the Instagram poll, thank you. If you saw the Instagram poll earlier tonight, I'm not happy at you. But no, it's posted. cool. We voted on, I know I posted it, only because someone brought the costume. And I was like, all right, I'll be fair. How many people voted? No, it wasn't three. Uh, we had Dina on seven accounts. <laughs> Stefan, how many accounts did you vote on? Just one. Just one. One of the young gentlemen voted early, yes, right. So there's at least like six or seven people. Uh, I don't know. I tried to check before, but I couldn't get it. All right, George Lucas, uh, of the original trilogy, this is the only film that he directed. Um, Empire and Return of the Jedi were not directed by uh, George Lucas, but the prequels were, and uh, that could shape your opinion. Uh, Star Wars came out in 1977, right after the bi a year after the bicentennial. Um, this was a big, important time for America culturally, right? They had been around for 200 years, this rebel country that fought off an empire. Uh, Star Wars for the time, $11 million budget, is not a huge budget. Um, George Lucas really worked hard to get financing for this film. It grossed a ton of money and went on to become a cultural smash. Uh, still affecting, I would say, pop culture up until this day. A lot of people would have sworn 10 years ago Star Wars was over and we were proven wrong. And some people are happy about that, some people aren't. I'm, I'm definitely happy. Because, you know, I think people deserve stories like this. Uh, Star Wars has been released uh, multiple times. Uh, the special editions, I know 1996, 7 it came out. And then several times after that. Um, we can talk about that as well. I watched the original cantina scene in preparation for this. I will, there's a gif of it, but I didn't, I mean, we could watch it also. It's on my G, uh, drive if you want. Um, I keep calling it Star Wars because that's, as most of us probably know, that was the name of the movie. 
Um, it was not episode four until the re-release, um, which means that with Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi were the names of those movies. Um, in the original film, there is no episode four, A New Hope, at the first, original scroll. Um, but it is very hard these days to get the original uh, release of the movie. And that's me vamping. Uh, before I tell you kind of what I think about the movie, as I said, that quote from the first slide kind of framed my thinking tonight. So I figured I would show you the scene that it comes from and then share with you kind of like my general thoughts. Thinking about the idea of technophobia. Um, Technology, when you go back and you look at like uh, initial definitions of it, uh, technology is something that's supposed to aid in human life, right? And technological advancement is what anything that is making life easier for people. Um, and technophobia is not the like just hatred of technology. What the idea of technophobia is is the suspicion in the belief that technology will only help life, right? Well, it's the reluctance to be persuaded to believe that technology is going to solve all of the problems. Um, and this film, uh, Star Wars, really helps show uh, the underlying dangers and concerns that follow that belief, right? the belief that technology is going to fix everything. Uh, what we end up seeing is malfunction, misuse, and technological inadequacy that really help to prop up the individual in this film and show humanity's superiority over technology. Uh, the Death Star, in a lot of ways, becomes that ultimate symbol for technology and what is dangerous and scary about it. Uh, any questions before we move on? What about the yes, sir. I, believe, I would consider them a form of technology open to discussion this evening. Uh, Darth Vader, I would consider something worth discussing. Uh, the vehicles, the weapons, right? Um, I think all of this is worth thinking about, sharing our thoughts in regards to. Um, and the first topic that we're going to go to is uh, technology. And I'll show you two short clips, and then we can kind of open it up. Did you have a question? Uh, no, no, no. You sure? Just... You just put. Fingers, I know. Fingers. OK, cool. Um, any questions? Anybody like, nah, technology is only bad in this movie? OK. I want to say it was good for its time. Yeah. Oh, like special effects? Yeah. 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 Um, I think where this movie is different from the other ones that we've studied mm. is that this one is more about, at least to me, yeah. what technology makes people do or allows people to do mm -hmm. so much as like the other two movies it was you know jurassic park it was you know technology creating these monsters and the monsters killing people yeah and the matrix was it, you know humans creating this ai and then the, the ai enslaving people mm -hmm. i feel like it's more like it's still very grounded in what humans do yeah it's just that we're a little bit farther forward in time yeah right? You know what I mean? so yeah, we're backwards in time, right? right? A long time ago. It's but that is, a, that is a really good point, both of those, because this is a society or universe that the film presents to us in which technology is fully, this technology is fully ingrained into their culture, into their ways of life, right? Nobody thinks about it. Nobody questions it. You flip a light switch and the light bulb goes on, you don't think about the, the electricity that's flowing to it. You know it's there. Right, but it's not something that you're you're all you're conscious of, and technology is is that's how it progresses and advances. It becomes so much a part of your life that you don't notice it anymore. Um, so, like the droids are a great example um, of what we see with that. Uh, we take them from granted. All right, um, here's here's Alderaan, um, and again, try to think about the different kinds of ways you see technology, how it's being used. Um, you can think about the setting, you can think about the uniforms, think about Alderaan itself as a planet if you want. You can think about the fact that this is 1977. Uh, and again, I said, right, like the Death Star for me is this really important symbol of technology in the film. So here is it one more time, a little after. Look at him, he's heading for that small moon. Okay. Uh, and I let it 
run until it is into the Death Star because I, I think that that image at the end of the ship almost like being engulfed like by a whale is really important to, to consider. All right, so I mean, I, I think one of the things that first attracted me to this film was the technology in it. And I mean, I thought the weapons were cool. I thought spaceships were gee whiz um, and things like that. Uh, and yeah, yeah, it's an adjective. Um, you didn't know? <laughs> Language is fluid. You can, if we enough of us say it, uh, we can uh, make it happen. Like calling him Gur Martin, right? Uh, just call him Gur. Um, so uh, it's it's a uh, it's inside joke, deep cut. Uh, ta in talking about Game of Thrones, it was like Gur Martin. Uh, okay. I mean, like I don't know. What do you guys think about technology? Open it up, talk about the robots if you want, ask a question about the lightsabers, and yeah. I think just the, the, the lightsabers have gone down next to like Back to the Future's hoverboard as mm -hmm. some of the like, most iconic uses of like, you know, the like, props or like you know, technology in any kind of like, film. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to make a note of that because they're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. understand how lightsabers work. I'm uh, like, how does the laser beam... It's a, ki it's a kyber crystal. crystal. Yeah, the it's crystal. a light going through a crystal, and the crystal amplifies the light, and basically, I don't... It's, it's complicated. complicated. Basically, the thing is... is it's all theory. It doesn't matter. Yes, <laughs> my, my actual... I, I don't want to bring this up now, but like my huge thing with Star Wars is how much it feels like it's like almost religious or spiritual yes. versus yeah. technology. That's mm -hmm. what I was about to say. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, your ancient religion. Your ancient religion. Using your instinct, trusting something deep inside versus using whatever else. And I have a feeling we might get to that later, but like, mm -hmm. that's really like my elephant in the room when it comes to Star Wars, like the main thing that I see. Yeah. Uh, next slide is about the force, and our last slide is about hope uh, and okay. something inside which you were kind of speaking to. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was like one of my biggest like things. Like I guess my favorite takes on this movie was like like Star Wars isn't. It's not sci-fi. It's yeah. fantasy, just yeah. and chrome. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> like um and part of the reason and people always go well why do you say that and I always go well part of the biggest reasons is no one ever marvels at their technology. Right. right in yeah. The movie. It's just, yeah, it's just, yeah, this is a droid. Mm -hmm. That's a hover thing. That's, Aircraft. this is my laser baton. This is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, like the oh, one of those old things? Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, like, no, the only thing that ever, anybody ever, like, marveled at, like, <coughs> and, and I just noticed it now, is the Death Star. Like, the Death mm -hmm. Star is, is uh, supposed to be the pinnacle technological achievement. And like he said, it. this is the greatest fighting Force in the mm -hmm. universe. Like, this is Most like, powerful yeah, force in the universe now. Yeah, 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 yeah which, but which is, which is <laughs> thirty years later. Yeah, <laughs> but it is Death Star two point oh. There's like mm -hmm. it's gonna make this thing bigger. They make that joke. You're right. Yeah, like so, you know, yeah, that's just, just, just totally correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna agree. That that's exactly what I was thinking. That yeah. the technology is all over the place in this movie, uh -huh. but the characters don't notice it. Yeah. And that's what makes the film good because it's not like driven by. The 1977 technology. Right. Gee whiz, look at this. This is yeah. just a hero arc story. Yeah. A really good one. Mm hmm. But overlaid, like you said, like that was a great way to put and fantasy in a sci fi like outfit. Yeah, yeah, in Chrome. I like that. Good way of describing it. The more they went forward, the more they went backward because yeah. this, is, this is so mercantile. Yeah. It's just like we're going to spend. X amount of time going from planet to planet for like spice, essentially, mm -hmm. like just like random nameless currency sure. and resources. Rebu Republic credits yeah, or whatever, you know? We're just like, in, we're gonna get into fights because <coughs> people feel like they should keep their spice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, and the and the prequels definitely go into that more. Did, yeah. Dune. Yeah, spice, Dune. This is the second time Dune's come up today. All right. Dune should. Dune, Dune would be Dune, Dune's a good movie to talk about too. So um, my thing was that um, I saw this on a video. If you think about it, not just the um, oh my God, the evil, I forgot the bad guys, the not the rebel lines, the opposite, the um, oh my God, yeah. the Galactic Empire, mm -hmm. in the episode, in episode seven, the new, the First Order. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, they're kind of like. <sighs> They're kind of like the Nazis or like the Germany, like the German yeah, officers yeah, yeah. In, in World War Two, like from history. So it's like yeah. it's kind of a mixture of like sci, I guess sci-fi and oh not sci-fi, but like sci-fi and like mixed of history. Because 
the fir was like the First Order and you can like Galactic Empire and First Order to the Germans and the Nazis in well, World War Two because they're all black. They storm yeah, well, yeah, well actually, yeah, 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 um, yeah, and that's yeah, well, and that's sorry. Right. This is not, um about it's not episode four, but episode seven. They did the, the Hitler salute thing in episode seven. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, and I think the uh, the parallels with fascism. Yeah. Uh, in, Nazism, yeah. in, yeah. in uh, German, they say uh, which means stormtrooper. And that's yeah. What they, that's yeah. What, yeah, that's what they called the like elite force during mm -hmm. World War II. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it, it directly translates to stormtrooper. So mm -hmm. What's it called in German? Stormtrooper. Okay. I actually didn't. Close enough. Sorry. <laughs> not German, okay? I actually know that, like, I thought they were just, like, one I mean, I, now that I'm thinking about it, it's like, now that I know today that they're kind of based off of, based off of the German Nazis, like, like, a year ago, when I first, like, not saw the movie, but, like, saw it on, the t on TV just because it was on there. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I thought it was, I didn't really think about Nazis in Germany. I thought it was just a random bad guy that showed up. Or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. yeah. Um, like the old, the old movie Predator mm -hmm. is based on the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. And like, there's there are a ton of movies that so are based, based, based on, yeah, that are based on yeah. real things. So, so to clarify, right? What you guys are speaking about is like what I keep trying to like like drive home with these things, right? Films are reflections of our own culture, right? Reflections of our own history. Uh, Godzilla, 10 years after the atomic bomb is dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, is totally a reflection of how Japan feels about America. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, movies ground, that's what makes them resonate, right? Like, that, the, those themes that you can connect to, where you see yourself. The TV show Black Mirror, right? It's showing you us and technology in a world just reflected darkly. Right. That's the Black Mirror. Or, I don't know, it's a different conversation. Maybe that's the Black Mirror, maybe. This is the Black Mirror. Okay. I gotta make a Black Mirror reference at least once in a class. Uh, all right. Black Mirror is a show, uh, it originally was on the BBC, Netflix picked it up. Um, it's, it was kind of like a, like a modern like Twilight Zone kind of thing, but in terms of technology and what, it's, what it could do to us, right? Uh, it's this class, but like paranoia, like yeah. by the million. Yeah, I haven't told you to destroy your iPhones yet. You're safe, it's okay. Siri's listening. You should trust her. We will if you ask me. That's what I'm working for. You will. Siri's listening always, so be paranoid. You will use a flip phone. Okay. I'm just surprised how, like, every movie is just based off history of them. And, right, like, in addition to the parallels we see with stormtroopers and Hitler and fascism, right, because Nazism is a form of fascism and totalitarianism, there are also parallels with. Nazis and the technology. Uh, a lot of German scientists came over to the United States and helped develop some of our greatest weapons. The Nazis developed uh, really powerful weapons uh, during the war that were instrumental in them having such a, a big lead at one point if we're keeping score. Um, Actually, some of the Apollo missions, mm -hmm. uh, the rockets from them were taken from German planes for missiles. Yeah. No, no, that's what I'm right. Like, but what? And there was also like a lot of experimentation, a lot of torture being done on people, extermination of, of groups and individuals, right? Uh, widespread, right? Like with the Holocaust. Um, so like that is definitely something like we can talk about, right? You can talk about like what this is saying about like. I don't know, the Nazis, I guess, if you'd like. Um, you could talk about the droids. Does anybody have any thoughts on robots in this movie and how they are depicted? They have strong personalities. Okay, yeah. are all they, of they them? They kind of have feelings, but they kind of don't. Some of them, the yes. They're depicted as just another person. Just yeah, like, yeah. Well, okay. Well, like, for good and for bad, well, right? Well, no, just no, another person. You um, know some characters we're following. Like, okay. We're following C-3, but we're following R2, so they have very strong personalities. <clears throat> There are like, you know, the R4 unit who's mm -hmm. got a bad motivator. Maybe he had a personality, but it blew up, so we don't know. Sure. I mean, Dr. Ball is uh, one of my favorite dro droids in this movie. He's a torture droid. Yeah. His name is not Dr. Ball, but I think we should all call him that. Okay. Yes, sir? One mic. Both kind of like utilized a lot, but at the same time, I feel like they're seen as um, like this different part of society. Yeah. Because the cantina has the whole like restriction, like no, we don't yeah. serve your kind here. Absolutely, and that what that uh, I'm glad you brought that example up because that's one of the ones where I remember watching it and being like, 
oh man, that's messed up to the droids. Like they're racist against droids. Uh, what the bartender is not letting play out though is a scene in which a man serves a machine. Right? We don't serve yeah. their kind here. He's not allowing humans or humanoid creatures to, to be subservient to a machine, regardless of like, the personality, because I think we all, we, we feel for the, the droids in that scene. We feel the injustice. Um, so much so that, like, again, in later films, they'll kind of play that up more. Like the droid revolution like, in Solo. In Solo, yeah, absolutely. That's kind of what I'm alluding to. Yeah, like, I believe that is a response to people's reaction to that we don't serve their kind here kind of scene. It's so weird and cool that we think about what happens in these movies. Like, we, just, the first time around, we just, we just like, watch them for fun because we like it and we're not, but then after you start, after a while, I just start thinking about it. It's like, oh, yeah, I remember, it's like, oh, that thing. You have yeah. some mm -hmm. realizations. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the difference between high culture and low culture, right? Low culture film, it is what it is. It's pure entertainment. Uh, something that's more high culture in terms of art is something that you can enjoy for entertainment, but you can, it can also make you think, it can make you feel, it can make you grow. Um, and I'll, I think a lot of people at this point in time would say that like Star Wars has been like that for them for many different reasons. Um, but yeah, going back to the droids, in, in, in later movies we'll see droid torture and like uh, in Jabba's palace and like yeah. feel for them. Um, C-3PO falls apart in every movie. Um, and I hate C-3PO. I, I thought that again watching it. He just, he, he was the Jar Jar Binks before Jar Jar Binks. I got no love for C-3PO. No, no, it's fine. Okay. Don't fight with me. It's okay. I can have my opinion. Uh, no I'm realizing Jar -Jar, this right now. Jar -Jar. It's an honest Jar -Jar confession Jar -Jar. to you. Jar Jar uh, is forever. Jar Jar is the first completely right, digital character. And that is something worth discussing as well in terms of our reaction to him. Right? You, we can't relate or connect to something that's not real. It was before Gollum? Yeah, it was before Gollum. Yep. 99. Yeah, 99. Uh, wow. Uh-huh. Yeah, but Gollum was also uh, Andy Serkis. Was In motion capture, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, there was so yeah, Jar Jar Binks was just a computer-generated character. That they were no, I think he was actually no, an actor, and a student, exactly. an actor, a voice actor. Doing the, but they didn't. It wasn't motion capture dots and stuff. It was placeholders. No, no, it wasn't that. Yeah. Was yeah. Was no, I've seen the mask. I've seen the mask. But that's just so the actors can play off of it. Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, I, mm -hmm. I thought in Force Awakens, Ankar Plus, I thought that was all CGI, but just a big, one big suit or whatever. I always think that back in the days, like, people just used makeup or whatnot, but then they just started using CGI and relying on that on everything. Mm -hmm. But they used a combo of both. And what happens is a lot of times the CGI doesn't age well. Um, and something in this film, I think the use of practical effects and miniatures uh, really helps it hold up. Uh, I watched the additions to this film, like on ta Tatooine and other places like that, and it just looks messy and it looks like a PlayStation 2 game. Um, you know what I mean? When they add the yeah. CGI, yeah. It's and it's awful. everywhere, it's just like cluttering up the screen. We gotta do one mic, guys. We gotta do one mic. We can't listen to everybody at the we same time. No, Whoever wants to go first is cool. You go first. Okay. It's not so much like, me. Um, also, Jabba in Jabba's palace in episode six is an actual like giant costume that two people have sure. to. Sure. It's a puppet. Work. Yeah. Or three it's people. Like Kermit that. the Frog. Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> the Henson Company, right? So. Uh, now you got Frank Oz. We just went from talking about. Like droids and droid torture, uh -huh. to comparing uh, Jabba the Hutt and Kermit the Frog. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the technology that goes into the production of the movie, right? Like yeah, the still, the fact that he's an animatronic puppet that feels why lifelike. Why are there so many? Yeah, I would watch I would watch a video on YouTube of Jabba the Hutt singing that. Sure. Uh, other thoughts? Uh, you want to talk about the Death Star at all? Yeah. Thinking about droid torture, just okay. Kind of awesome, <laughs> I love it. I try to do it once a day. I remember seeing that like they personified the droids so much of this that they allowed them to be tortured, but yeah. you can't torture a droid by putting something that right. doesn't have nerves, right? But it was screaming when it was getting its feet hit, and you're like, and you almost start to forget in this movie that the droids aren't droids mm -hmm. because Art. droids start tortured, right? I mean, theoretically, they could just like hit a button. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Like it, Why would you make a robot that could feel pain? And, and, and it's a robot doing it to a robot. Right. Yeah, Which on top of that is like doubly human. It's, it's, like it's mega messed up. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, it's, it's, so the, the, the robots Sorry, it's just good. business. At least, <laughs> at least the droids are just, they're just people. I see you. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. In, in this particular um, movie, yeah, the, per, the personality comes out more like the, the torture that happens later, that's later in, on in Jedi. That's in, in Return of the Jedi, yeah. Yeah. 
But like in this one, like R2 lies. Yeah. He totally like lies outright to look okay, oh I can't play this image of Princess Leia. Until you take my restrictor bolt off. off. Yeah. All of a sudden he's gone, he pieces out. Like that's not within a character like that's not the characteristic of what a, a computer is supposed to do. It's supposed to do what it's programmed. Mm -hmm. I just thought that like one that R2 is actually the hero of all these stories. And like why is it that this one's particularly so special? Or mm -hmm. is it just that particular model or mm -hmm. is like that's Art. what I don't know is like we see other other models and versions and they don't have that same personality yeah so it's like is it just because we're following this one that we see that or are they all kind of like that and meant to be that way yeah you know yeah. R2 was actually played by a guy yeah, yeah. yeah Ken, ba Ken Baker or whatever yeah, um, he's the chosen one of the droids um, <laughs> but what, what what you're kind of alluding to is the idea of uh, the ghost in the machine right um, the idea that if you've ever seen, what's the Will Smith movie? I, Robot, again, based on Asimov's like, rules of robotics, um, the idea that like, a soul will evolve in, in machines eventually. Like, that's what comes with the being self-aware. Eventually, errors in code or whatever will create feelings and dreams and, and stuff like that in, in r robotic life forms. And then does that make them any different from us then? Besides, if you think about what makes us individual and concepts of the, that spark or consciousness or soul, right? Like how are R2-D2 and C-3PO different? You know, do they represent, you know, what might happen with technology, what Siri Logic might become? Yes? Well, maybe because R2's memory wasn't mm -hmm. That's a good point, too. Revenge of the Sith and C-3PO's was. Mm -hmm. R2 knew who all these people were. In a lot of ways, yeah, yeah, right? Like he's the only one who knows. he was motivated to do what he did. Yeah. No, that's a that's a really good point. Or maybe <coughs> yeah. continuously learning. Then we'll go around. Continuously learning. Yeah. R two D two in a lot of ways is like a Swiss Army knife. Whatever they need him to do, oh, yeah. he can do. Yeah. Um, that's actually that's, really that's good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a different um, mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, really okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Um. I never really been able to do this. Um. How 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 can we translate R two D two's beeps and whistles into like. Pure like English, so it, cause I never really it. the it's same way that we can. It's, uh, Star Wars told us uh, uh, Shakespeare. There, the, the, oh yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I like, the, yeah. Like, like, I never actually knew like how like the how the, the, the how would like how, like how he translates translate his like because I, I don't mean it's like I kind of know what he says, but I don't mean like how those beats and whistles are it's translated. It's a to little English. bit of like a mixed Morse code. It's because like you don't, there's no English. It's just the beat. No, you're right. Um, and ultimately, in the course of the original trilogy, Luke will learn to understand R two D two. Not in this film. He still needs the the computer. Like we see it when he's in the X wing. It's typing out what R two is saying to him, or C three PO is translating. Um, but over time, a relationship will be built in which Luke will be able to understand those beeps. Yeah. And I think that's interesting, too, in terms of like what it says about our relationship with technology. You had your hand up, and then we'll go here. No, no, I, no, 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 the, the lady next to you. The, lady. the young lady next to you. I'm here. Oh, it's on my shoulder. I'm here. <laughs> yes. Um, well, it's kind of interesting to think that towards the end of the movies, you kind of start understanding what R2 is saying mm -hmm. yourself. That's one thought. Um, even if you're just making it up in your head. Um, yeah. But one thing that I think is interesting that you said is, is R2 the hero of the movie? <laughs> if he, and, and how would we really know if he was? Because has anybody watched the movie through, like, from yes. the perspective? I know you have. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Yesterday. I watch it as from Chewbacca's perspective, too. And I'm like, Chewbacca is such an emotional Hilarious. character. Yes. He's got the biggest heart, but... Yeah, oh, sorry. But, well, it, I think it's, it's interesting to think that there are these technological beings in this movie, and you don't really give them a chance to, to like, really even think about watching seven movies as that one character being the main character you just you be, because we're so we're so used to human beings being the heroes we mm -hmm. just focus on them but what's the real story yeah, yeah. that's a good point r2d2 uh, almost gets destroyed in the end of this film right darth vader hits him during the death star assault and luke has a connection to him and says no please return re to, uh, repair him that droid and i have been through a lot uh, it kind of goes like that. I've never seen such loyalty in a droid. He says about you know R two going after Obi Wan, and Luke like in turn like starts to reciprocate that for him. Um, I think yes, yes, and then here. Um, I just also like uh, the fact that throughout all these movies, 
everyone is so like multilingual yeah with all the different races of alien and everybody kind of understands each other mm -hmm. that i'm like to a certain degree i don't understand the purpose of c3po anymore because mm -hmm. like, everybody understands everything why does uncle owen need c3po does anyone remember Zeros and ones, zeros and computers. Of the moisture evaporators, yeah, exactly, right? So here's humans not being able to communicate with the technology that is subservient to them and needing moisture. another robot to, to help bridge that gap, that connection, right? Yeah. The technology has become uh, both a, so much ingrained in our lives, but also in some respects, like, inaccessible. Yeah. All right, so I had said you next, and then you, and then I think maybe a hand right here. Okay. Also, okay. I, I gotta learn names. I know most people's names. I'm always afraid I'll make a mistake. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. No, uh, it's just that back during the uh, original playing of Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back, yeah. there was commentary made that really it was about the droids and that they were mm. taking you along this trip yeah and that was actually brought out at that point and you're going okay fine and you know the hiatus between uh return of the jedi and and the prequels yeah yeah just kind of made you wonder for how long was it like a decade it was 83 was return and 99 was episode yeah, one yeah. Yeah. So all, all of us that were driven crazy by that. No, 99. Yeah. Who, A lot of big movies. Who, who's, who's going to tell <laughs> the story and are we going to remember what the hell they said? Yeah. So. I love C3PO. I, I know I said I hate C3PO. I do. I love his arc over the, the three movies in the trilogy. I'm not much of a storyteller, I'm afraid. And by the end of it, he is telling this epic to the Ewoks. Yep with like sound effects and stuff, and he becomes a great storyteller. So maybe he's a learning computer, maybe he, the droids are adapting. But they stop using that, but they haven't erased his memory. C-3PO? So he only think, he, he thinks he's not a good storyteller because he just doesn't remember anything? Wait, wait, what's your name? Okay. He remembers what happens in the original trilogy. Yeah. Does he? He remembers what happens from the time that... No, the original being... No, because Anakin built... Four, five, and six. Anakin built C-3PO. Oh, yeah. Speaking of that, Anakin building C3PO. Oh, yes, sir. Bear All ideas here. are welcome. All ideas Bear are welcome. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm bearing. Okay, so I remember reading in this. Uh, it's the fingers, <laughs> though. <-canon laughs> comics. Uh huh. Okay, I'm just gonna no, no, you're doing great. You're doing fine. It, there was this uh, little thing that was set during the Empire Strikes Back where Darth Vader actually found the pile of droid parts. Mm -hmm on Cloud City of C-3PO, and it suddenly brought back all these memories of finding 3PO mm -hmm. on Tatooine, and it was yeah. called Thank the Maker. It's probably one of my favorite not Legends, Star Wars, mm -hmm. Tales, stories. It's, And he actually showed a sign of compassion towards the end. Mm -hmm. He wanted Chewbacca to have the uh, droid parts, okay. simply just stating, I am giving the Wookiee what he deserves. Okay. Because he had a flashback about his mother and mm -hmm. yeah. all that, and it, it, it just really, but he resorted back to being the same old cruel son of a, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see in the books who Anakin's father was, or was it just the mother, or like, why was it always just mother, not like the father? Um, uh, go ahead. The, it's because the there wasn't yeah. a father. It was so like, like just the mini chlorians just created the child. Boom. It's a metaphor for immaculate. Consent. What do they call it? They call it a, a, a com, is it a convergence of the force or a variance in the force? But the idea that he was conceived a virgin. Yes, uh, he was conceived by the force. Some people think maybe Palpatine like manipulated it. Um, yeah, or Darth Plagueis, perhaps. Oh, so like, so it's not, so it's but I think all that is like, more like the conjecture and theory. But also, Skywalker is like this John Smith of the Star Wars universe, yeah, from yeah. what I understand. Yes, sir. Do I think that with C three PO and R two? Are they in all eight movies? Yes. yes. Yeah. So they're the only characters movies. in all eight movies. Yeah. They're like the chorus, and right. like like from Shakespeare are. almost. Like at some point, like what are you saying, like 
that there's something that they're the storytellers. Mm-hmm. Well, they're the only characters that go through the entire arc with everybody. Mm-hmm. So and they sort of even like a, a long for I some mm-hmm. everything. And traditionally, oh, yeah. the the chorus is gonna like uh, it's for the cheap seats in a lot of ways, right? The chorus, ca- choral characters, and like Shakespeare, it's to give you something to chuckle at. Usually, like well, physical humor, a robot like, falling down. Well, there could be like, relief. Too. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's definitely true. Or two slipping in oil. Or yeah. Like falling yeah. down, making weird noises. But when mm-hmm. also, um, they have to. Yeah. They have to keep like. Most movies that are actually pretty good, they keep some like not not main characters the same, mm-hmm. but they keep some side characters like C three PO or R two D two. Not arguing with you, but just saying that sometimes they can be considered side characters. <laughs> and um, oh, like, gotcha. Like in the Purge, they mm-hmm. they have to keep this one guy. I think his nickname was Stranger, mm. and he's been there for all of the movies. But okay. they have to keep at least like one person the same yeah. because it creates some sort of conformity. It's a, yeah, um, and it's interesting that that char- those characters that are kept the same are uh, like robotic. They're droids, right? They're not human characters. And traditionally, like a human character is what we're going to relate to most. No one relates to um, Greedo. I hope. Right? Wow. Like, does any, do you see, like, you watch the movie and you're like, Greedo, that's the character I'm rooting for. Or Greedo, that's the character I see myself in. I was rooting for Greedo because he was in a. Was, I don't, I don't know if I believe that. Go ahead. He was talking with He was talking with Wade. In the 30 seconds you had Greedo on screen, you're like, yeah, this guy, I'm gonna root for him. And I'm like, I love that makeup. That dude looks awesome. And then suddenly it's Han Solo sitting back and he pulls out a gun and I'm like, Greedo, why? Greedo was such a waste of a character. Yeah. I think more open. I would say more of a waste than Driver Binks. No, no, no. Greedo's got to establish, you know, who Han is. Like yeah. his, he's not there Greedo to be a character. Greedo is just the one dude. Who's yeah. just like, come on, shoot me. Mm-hmm. We watch. We watch. Or maybe you will. But we, I'm just. We slowed him. down the original scene and watched it really slowly. Um, it's it's funny. Like, it like first Wait, shot, first the original movie. scene. There's a GIF of it right there. The yeah, no, that's shot. the original scene right there. Oh, that's the original. Oh. They don't to- show the two shot. They only show Han shooting. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's at least... There's at least three different versions. Another green man murdered in cold blood. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I heard many different things. Was it the Han shot first? Peter shot first? Like, I'm so... Uh, it, again, if you watch, uh, there's a big puff of smoke, right? I think yeah. the implication was that Han's shooting first, and then George Lucas, with the re-releases, said that that was never his intention, and as the creator, like like Dr. Frankenstein, he can he can he has the right to change his creation and alter it and make it fit more in line with his original vision. And something we can talk about in ter- in connection to technology is that. Like, is that true? Is that George Lucas just trying to make money? Um, is he being Dr. Frankenstein in this scenario? What do you think? I think it's three Star Wars. I think there's yeah. three versions of that scene, right? Yeah. Oh, of the uh, cantina? Of the Greek. Yes, scene. there's, a, there's, there's three, three versions. Yeah. Han shoots only. Mm-hmm. And there's, they shoot at the same time. Mm-hmm. And then there's Greedo shoots first. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, missing. and there's the one with the, they add in the digital lasers. But yeah. I, you see them. I, I would just, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't even. And you see Han move. Yeah, he moves in one of the re releases. Yeah. I wouldn't classify it as changing or editing the movie. Yeah. They're just different movies. They're just different. I, like, well, I don't... I it's like Blade Runner. There are different versions of it. Yeah, because it gives you a totally different character yeah. for Han Solo. I think Blade Runner would be great. I don't know if it's too Matrixy too soon, but maybe. What? Yes, sir. Blade Runner as a topic. kind of ties into, like, what yeah. we'll probably talk about afterwards in terms of, like, whether or not remaking and changing things and all yeah. that stuff is, is good, bad, whatever. But, um, yeah, like you mentioned... It, kind of changes uh, Han Solo's story arc. And I know that's what George Lucas has said, like, oh, well, if he shot first, then he's not as good of a character. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, that's the point. He's mm-hmm. supposed to start off as this, like, selfish, you know... Yeah. yeah. Redemption without right. And, redem- and redeem himself. But with that change, now it changes the story. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I think you know, that's a great point. In Rogue One, I don't know any character's name in Rogue One. But, no, um, I don't. What's the guy who kills the the other rebel spy in the very beginning of the movie? The main character? Yeah, the main character. Yeah, Cassian Endor or something. Endo or something like that. Yes, thank you. Yes. Um, I instantly disliked that character because of that action. Right? And I didn't feel that way about Han Solo, but maybe that is what George Lucas was afraid of. Right? Because I could, couldn't care for him the rest of the movie. There was no real redemption for him in my mind. Well, in, in yeah. that case, it was a little bit different. Like, he was another, like, rogue person. Mm-hmm. They were on the same team. Yeah. 
Greedo in this and Han are both okay. shady characters, so it's like it's a little different. Like it's it's like seeing a good guy kill another good guy. Mm -hmm. and these two bad guys killing each other. It's like you don't have the same impact. Okay, yeah, that's so, true. That's a valid point. Other thoughts about re-release or technology in general before we switch gears to the Force and look at the other yeah, side um, of the so coin. So I've seen like the movies like <laughs> and on TV like because I've never seen the original. Like cause I was never born. Sorry. Um, you don't have to apologize for that. It's not your fault. It's, it's TV. Wasn't I wasn't born either. It's cool. I was born in the wrong generation. Hold on, sorry. I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah. But when they show it on TV, like, I can't remember. It's, like, hard to know because when I press, like, the button on the TV, it's, like, like it just says Star Wars New Hope. But I, it's hard to tell which one which one they show on TV. Would they be original or do they do, like, the... Um, Maybe like the newer versions. It's all, you're only going to see the newer versions. Wow. You're not going to, because they're in the Disney vault at yeah. this point now. Uh, there's always rumor and talk that they're going to re-release the original versions oh, theatrically God. or on Blu-ray, and it's never gone anywhere, right? People, we've been hearing that for years. Yeah. He's never going to do it. Uh, same thing like with uh, the holiday special. You will not be able to find the holiday special unless it's a bootleg, unless you're finding it online, right? Because George Lucas doesn't want you to see the holiday special because he was counting his money instead of paying attention to what was happening in it. See, the thing is, is that there's yeah. this one scene... Um, in... I, I, no. Just, I'm just trying to focus where we are. Go ahead. The originals. I forgot which one it was. Was it Darth Vader and Palpatine talking in hologram? No. It Go was ahead. It was this single scene where Darth Vader was talking to bounty hunters. Mm -hmm. And it, there's a pan around where it shows a couple of people. Mm -hmm. And... Then there are there are so many characters that actually, if you look into like the comics and the books mm -hmm. and everything, they are like actually really in depth characters. Yeah, like IG eighty eight. Yeah, IG eighty eight. Bosk. Then there's Boba Fett mm -hmm. and there's oh, Dangar. Yeah, and Boba Dying Return. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. You just see them for a split second, and you just think of them. Oh, it, those are the bounty hunters that are going to go kill some people. I interesting. A theory I want to share with you. I always thought uh, Boba Fett killed Luke's aunt and uncle, because Vader makes the point of saying, "And this, and, and no disintegrations this time." Mm. Right? Um, and I was always like, "That's a weird line to say specifically to that character." And we know the stormtroopers aren't good at shooting things, <laughs> right? So. That, again, there's no real, maybe, there's no real basis for that. Are they so bad at shooting stuff? Only when the script needs them to be. No, because they're clones and their genetics are so screwed up for being well, replicated. Oh, yeah, because you're, 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 you're like, you're like, you're They weren't, yeah, I don't know if I, right. FN2187. But metaphorically, they are all clones, right? Like, they're all exactly the same. They all look the same. They have no individuality, no names. Right, um, there's something worth considering with that. Uh, the clone thing is, I, I believe the clone thing in the prequels comes from, it's just a, the a next step of the, like metaphorically, how they were all clones of each other. Um, all right, I'm gonna show you a little bit of this scene for time. So it's just the explanation of the force. Um, do you need to see Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi fight? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, somebody else shared with me a, a theory that this movie is just Luke on a murder spree. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, he's just, his, his uncle and aunt get killed and he just starts murdering why, everybody. Why, why do guns just look so heavy? Yeah. yeah. No then, um, yeah. Well, also, when he picks it up, he, like, why do kills it down. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to place the place so he's an old man. Guns just got worse. Guns got worse. Spaceship's got a little worse, too. Though. How is he so good at the um, even though he's uh, Side note, I have proposed to the, I have several times proposed to the powers that be at LMC, uh, we should totally do like a Rift Tracks Mystery Science Theater uh, yes. version, which would be what you just illustrated, where we watch Woo. the movie and like make jokes and talk about it. Um, <laughs> but that is not what this is. Uh, wow. But if you are interested in it, uh, you should totally let the powers that be at LMC. I think that's their email address. Um, no. That one's free. You can have that one. As long as you get to vote whether you'll wear costumes during the tour. I will. And yeah, we could do that. Yeah. That's also my stormtrooper yeah, helmet. Like if I wore the suit, I would have worn the helmet too. Well, then you wear a bad guy and a good guy. Um, okay, uh, in a lot of ways, I think the Force uh, is the anti-technology in this movie. And what I, I mean that in a lot of ways, but what I want you to consider is like, we've talked before about technology is, is neither good nor bad. It's about balance, about how you use it, right? There's good and bad technology in this movie. And those same things can be said about the force, right? It's a force of nature, perhaps, that 
mere is opposed or uh, yeah, go ahead. I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, <laughs> it was a big word and I struggled. Sorry. I no, mean, no, no. It's, it's not your fault. You saved me. It's weird because like the force is like the one thing that's for a select few people mm. in these movies. Like these movies don't really have a concept of money, mm -hmm. so they don't really have like a. Like, like in, in, like, the abstract sense of most things, like, nobody's, like, like, yeah, like, the bounty hunters, they kill people, but nobody's going, I'm going to give you a hundred thousand, nobody's going to go, I'm going to give you a billion credits for this one person's life. Like, mm -hmm. For the most part, everybody seems broke and destitute in mm -hmm. these movies, but, like, if you have the force, you are special. Yeah. That's the only thing that makes you special in these movies. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And, um, movie, modern movies, like, the Lego movie will take those ideas and, like, poke fun at them, yeah. right? Like, the special. Mm -hmm. um, and then the idea that, no, we're, anyone can be special. Right. Um, and I don't know what this next Star Wars movie will be about, but that seems where they're taking it. And I think that's a noble place to take it because I think that's something that resonates with people much more. Well, Even though a lot of us secretly believed you were Neo all your life and then you saw The Matrix and you're like, oh, man, it's true. Uh, they made a movie about it. That's great. They're trying to tell me. Or maybe that was just me. Um, same thing with the Truman Show. I don't know. I don't know. As a kid, I was like, yeah, this is probably a TV show, Life. Yeah, I get it. I'm the main character. Okay. And then as you grow up, you realize the world is much bigger and like it's not about you. You grow out of solipsism and you learn empathy. Um, but in this movie, you're right. The force is for special people. Um, or training in the, some people are better than others, um, and that does seem like an inequality. Also, they they yeah. say, they say in this movie, they like have to teach him the force. Mm -hmm. But in the prequels, the ways and of the other force, ones, yeah. They, they say it's all about the midi chlorians and how, like, how you're born with it. You guys don't get why I don't like the prequels? Yeah, no, I, yes, yeah, yeah absolutely. It says you have to learn the force, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you're yeah. born with the force. The force is energy that binds us all and flows mm -hmm. through all living things. The but force is microscopic through, bacteria. The only people that who can binds us and loops us. Right, <laughs> yes, they are the same thing. They're different ways of looking at it. It's fine. It's just like your force is 10. It's over 10,000. I'm like, mm, I don't know. This isn't Dragon Ball Z. They, they, they made them, they turned the Jedi into a bunch of Scientologists. Yeah, and I liked, Let's just be honest. I liked yeah. that Last Jedi pointed that out. One Say what you will about that movie. I like that it's cognizant of some of the shortcomings, some of the hypocrisy. You too, please. Um, one of the things that I remember from Revenge of the Sith is Yoda basically saying, we've been training Jedi the wrong way. Let's yeah. do something differently. Yeah. Maybe that's that was the realization that prompted. Yeah, that could be that could be very true. Because all of a sudden he was like, wait a minute, we screwed up. Mm-hmm. I think, well, I think yeah. go get mad. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. No, no, the, the midichlorians versus going through everything else. Sure. Just, just reminds me of uh, high school physics. And, well, no, no, your light is 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 a particle. Yeah. No, 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 it's it's a wave. No, it's a particle. No, it's a wave. Yeah, it's it's my peanut butter in my truck. It's okay. There was a uh, maybe probably ten years ago now, but there was a couple of us at South Park where they were in the future, and it was like my science is stronger than your science, and they all were arguing about whose science was right. <laughs> they weren't arguing about religion, and I thought that was probably where we'll end up too. Um, uh, yes, Miss. I had um, what was it that like. Not that the force is opposite of technology, yeah. but I think they kind of work together a little bit too. Because mm -hmm. if you look at someone like Darth Vader, who had like the highest, like was so powerful with the force, and yet needed the technology to keep him alive. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think of it in the sense of, like there's no good, no bad. There's just like too much or too little of something, and it's just like severe off balance, and that technology needs to come in to create a balance in him. However, that's also the thing that disrupts him. <clears throat> and I think the film might be suggesting that technology can't be balanced, right? That there's always going to be individuals who are going to misuse and abuse technological power, that there's the only, the, there are no external safeguards against those kind of threats. The safeguards have to come from something inside of us, right? Some kind of belief in ourselves. Uh, General Go ahead, and then yes. Uh, yeah, General Grievous in the prequels. He's just like keep going back to the prequels, please. Go ahead, <laughs> continue. <laughs> it's fine. You guys were like, we got Kevin in a Jedi let's, outfit. I mean, let's see how much more we can like, torture let's him. Be honest, there's a lot, there's a lot so, more movie in so, the prequels. Yeah, General absolutely. Grievous, it's bigger universe. General, they they like show him as like this robot, and, yeah. then, and then they start showing that he's actually like part. 
living thing. Mm -hmm. That's not even prequels. That's the Clone Wars show. Um, yeah, yeah, no, which I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just like, that's even one more step removed. In no part of mm -hmm. anything have they ever given him the Force. Oh, yeah, he just used lightsabers. Yeah. Exactly. And he's like, I killed a bunch of Jedi and I watched how they fight. I have all these lightsabers. Look yeah, at my but eight he hands. Use the force. Yeah, yeah. No. The thing is, but he's an actual like living thing. He's a human. Uh, <laughs> what is Obi Wan? Obi Wan in um, is it in here? No. Obi Wan in uh, Return of the Jedi says he's more of Darth Vader. He's more machine than man, uh, twisted and evil. That was one of the last. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, and based on the Clone Wars TV show, the second Clone Wars TV right. show, uh, the one that's computer-generated characters and not hand-drawn, um, is uh, Grievous is a front-runner prototype to Darth Vader, right? Mm -hmm. He's just yeah. the heart and the eyes and the brain inside a older version of the Darth Vader suit. And then Ahsoka comes into the... Yeah. Yeah, and that, yeah, that was Rebels. That was Rebels. No, that was Clone Wars. Wars. She's in both. She's in both. I like. I hear she's a better character in Rebels. She's um. Yes. She good. bothers me like C three PO in uh, Clone Wars. Ah, uh, yes. Wars. <laughs> uh, kind of piggybacking off of Dina, um, but yeah, I don't think it's a full uh, opposite kind of spectrum because yeah. of the fact that it seems like the Jedi are the ones that can, you know, wield and create these lightsabers. Mm -hmm. and stuff like that, so you don't see anybody else using these. And um, that's a piece of technology. Mm -hmm. It's just how they use it. Well, well, sure. And and also, Luke loses his hand and has a robotic hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's so true. Like, he, in the same way, <coughs> like his father, you know, has... Both lost their hand. Mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. has a Both Luke lost their hand. That's, um... And that is a uh, motif that runs through the whole <laughs> series. No, but the losing limbs is, um... Um, all right, uh, I do have a discussion ball that we can transition to, and it's like the talking piece. I, I don't think, because that's what I do when I work with high school kids, um, I don't think that we need that. I think we all can be adults and listen to one mic at a time. Uh, yes, sir. I'm, okay, I know, I know we want to keep it to this one, but just going, just talking about the metachlorians. <laughs> Yo, God, trigger. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Trigger. You guys made a bet or something. Like, no, no. All right, no, go ahead. I, I mean, <laughs> no, please, 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 go ahead. I, I, it doesn't bother me at all. It's like, okay, like, you know that, that yeah. whole, that whole um, motif that comes into all genre stuff where it's yeah. like, you know, magic, like how you transition from magic to technology or magic is just technology that is. Mm -hmm so advanced that you can't understand it. Like, Doctor Strange, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, in the Marvel Universe, like, he is a scientist, right? Like, yeah. to him, the magic is, if I do X, I Y comes out. It's just that you other people don't get it. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, where, where, you know, Vader chokes the guy, and he's like, oh, you know, you're ancient, religious, and you're sorcerer ways. He's just like, and he chokes him. Like, to me, it's just kind of like, he's like, fool, you're just not initiated. Mm -hmm. You just, mm -hmm. like, like, you just have no idea what it is I'm playing with. Mm -hmm. So you speak haphazardly, but, like, if you really understood, like, what was required to master this, you wouldn't speak to me yeah. this way. Um, <laughs> and if it is little microscopic bacteria or whatever... Um, the ability to communicate with it, I think, is, is, a, is something that blows my mind a little bit, right? Um, Becoming uh, something that may sound strange is there was a movie called, not this isn't the strange part, there's a movie called ah, Phenomenon with uh, John Travolta, thank you. Um, what's strange is, I think, like, that's the closest I've ever come to seeing the force in another movie. Uh, at one point, he's going like this, and a pencil's, like, rolling back and forth on the table, and someone says, how are you making it do that? And he goes, I'm asking it to. Because he's right. using more of it. The, the yeah. Magic in that one was he, more of his brain power yeah. was available to him. But his answer, like, I'm asking it to, right? I'm not making it do anything. Like, I always kind of thought about that with the Force, yeah. and even with the Metachlorians, kind of, like, similarly, where it's like, I'm asking these things to help me, right? I'm, I'm more connected to this, these smaller living things that everybody else has forgotten to see. Or, or yeah. forgotten exists, yeah. No, actually, where it comes closest yeah, to go ahead. is if you go to the Star Trek episode, oh. Those Children. Okay. Where the dwarf doesn't have whatever, he, whatever biochemical compound in his body. Yeah. And Kirk and Spock synthesize it, and they end up having the same telekinetic power uh, okay. as everyone else. So uh, that's it's really where cool. It most shows up. Hmm. I like that. Star Trek. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you can like both at the same time. You can, you absolutely <laughs> can. What's the different new possible? As long as you don't. With the, like, I'll leave Voyager alone. With all of the balance oh. and all that. 
Um, <laughs> we can talk, but okay. Star Trek okay. Voyager. It was just Captain Janeway trying to be Ripley for 200 episodes. Listen, it's another conversation. Uh, so, wow. what's the uh, thing of the force? Stop before it comes to high It has nothing to do, I, I like that she's a strong woman. I think she's a great leader. I think the show itself has some weak spots to it. I think it's, uh, let's put Seven of Nine in a really skin tight thing. Her character's just eye candy. Is that Star Trek Star Wars? Okay. Yes, that's Star Trek. Backing up, yes sir, go ahead. Um, like balance, like, when Obi Wan and Anakin are fighting in Episode Three again, the prequel. Um, <laughs> it's like I I didn't say let's talk about a New Hope tonight. It's like let's talk about anything else. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so when he says, yeah. um, I have the high you're gun. supposed to bring balance to the Force, not destroy it. Mm -hmm. Well, there were two mm. Sith mm -hmm. and like a bajillion Jedi, and so then he brings it down to two Sith and two Jedi. Because mm -hmm. like, oh, because Order sixty six. Well, like, yeah, so he was bringing balance to the Force, but. The Jedi see it as destroying the Sith, mm -hmm. when in actuality it's, uh, it actually, when it, it's making the Sith and the Jedi equal. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Jedi should have been more powerful to what know about like, Order 66, because they, they can like mind, kind of mind read or something. They could have, they should have known better than like what was coming or known what Order 66 was. Like before the Clone even shot them, they should have like used their lightsaber, like just stopped all the bullets or just like slam, just killed them or something. They should yeah, have but I mean their they're judgment was clouded. They Their ability to use the force is diminished. We should tell the Senate that. Well, like they tried, but again, it's like it was someone said earlier with uh, Jurassic Park, it's because yeah. movie, but you know, they movie. need them not to know, otherwise there's no movie. Same reason why the good witch then just sap Dorothy back to Kansas. Oh, yeah. Well, the power was inside her all along. She couldn't send her back, right? We got a whole movie to pad out here. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go here, and then we're gonna go here. I think just, just when you were talking about the forces, like yeah. anti, it, I, I almost saw more like the forces, wisdom, and technology is knowledge. Mm. Like, there's only a limit to so much. Like, like the strongest force guy on the positive side was Ben Kenobi, and they got stuck in a tractor beam. Which is technology. Mm -hmm. and he couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, I mean, it's not like he could just can't put escape. Hand up and it's be like, Let's go the other way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He could have mm -hmm. yeah. had some Maybe. In his life. But and Darth Vader could have probably, you know, there's there, there's no like necessarily like direct back and forth between the two. I just saw the one as like you 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 know, knowledge takes you so far, and that's mm. what technology is in the movie, and wisdom takes you so far, and they interplay throughout the movie back and forth. But there's no real. You know, you can have all the technology in the world and all the knowledge in the world without any wisdom, you're going to use it for the wrong thing. Yeah. Or with the wisdom, you're going to use it for the right thing. So it's really just like kind of wisdom and knowledge could play back and yeah. forth. Yeah. Um, right. We're going to go here next. Something I want you to consider is um, which of the two, right? So Darth Vader or Obi Wan Kenobi, is, is humanity more likely to become like? And I don't mean like morally, I mean in terms of. What, what you're saying with like wisdom and knowledge and technology and how those are being depicted, I, I think Darth Vader is a much more realistic outcome for what the post-human is. Um, it's not being more in line with nature and being able to meditate and ma use magical abilities that people don't understand or talk to bugs, right? It's we're going to put technology inside of us. Technology is going to become a part of us. Mm -hmm. um, alive. Right, uh, it's going to keep us alive. It's going to be what allows what continues. Because Darth Vader is a cyborg. Darth Vader is totally like an example of the post-human, in the same way like you could argue the X-Men are too. Right, it's the next step. Uh, there are people who put a boombox speaker in their chest just to see if they could. We've put ears on mice. Right, but go ahead. No, no, no the gentleman behind no, you. No, no, no. It, not in regards to my question. I just want people to consider that about Darth Vader. Because he is someone who uses the force, right? But he is also someone kept alive by technology, imprisoned by technology. But what were you going to say? No, no, I was, I was trying to get, catch on to the back end of the... Please, uh, yeah, go ahead. Back end of the balance to the force. Thing. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, it, it just means that Mandy Patinkin wasn't there to say, I don't think that word means what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I love Manny Patinkin. He's a great guy. I kind of want him to be my grandpa. Um, oh, you're so good. Stay on a TV show, please. I know he's been on Homeland for a while, but before that he would do like two seasons and then go. And I'd be like, oh, this show's not the same without you. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, well, like, if you think about it, like, maybe, like, this entire time we've been rooting for the wrong side. What if there was, like, this thing, like, mm -hmm. three pre-prequels? Mm -hmm. You're always trying to get us to root for the bad guys. Oh, this yeah, is the second guys, week in a row. No, but mm -hmm. what if, what if mm -hmm. the Jedis had, the have turned. had this mass, mass, like, genocide, okay. this mass thing that mm -hmm. they did? Like, you said, like, 
Luke went on a killing spree. Yeah. What if they? What if the Jedi were this like bad force that killed so many people, and the Sith were trying to bring balance, mm. and the Sith were actually trying to contain the Jedi? That sounds like something a Sith would say. Yeah, yeah man, I'm just bringing balance. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I blew up Alderaan and killed millions of people. Said uh, to convince Anakin, it's like, oh, the Jedi are leading yeah. a revolt. Mm -hmm. Can't trust the Jedi anymore. And look what, what am happened. I now, the Emperor? <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. It's like that comes up in the prequels, yeah. The truth to manipulate <laughs> that the I'm the Emperor? No. <laughs> that comes up in the Everybody's prequels. The hero of the no. Story. Yes. Really that in depth? No, no, no. Remember, solipsism. You're gonna grow out of it. It's not all about you. Go ahead. <laughs> It's about, it's about <laughs> I, all of us. We're having a communal experience, right? Uh, communal struggle is universal. We're all, the, we're all the emperor. That's right. We want to what you said about <laughs> which way humanity is going yeah. to go. Be it Obi Wan Kenobi's way or Anakin. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Slash Darth. Uh, um, what's his name? Darth Vader's yeah. way. I mean, did what had happened to Darth Vader? happened to him because he was, you know, afraid of loss and you know, mm. going to the dark side. Who's to say that, I mean, even if it, humanity did go the other way, what do you mean? Just with the we. I guess it's like more spiritual and like our advancement is being able to like commune but with then nature. But are they both spiritual in some ways? Isn't the I force guess, yeah. all compassing mm -hmm. thing? Both sides are using it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so it's possible that technology may allow us to discover life we didn't know that was there, whether that's space or all around us that we just can't see. But then doesn't it just yeah. come down to intention? Yeah, yeah. All right. It's neither good nor bad. It's yeah. how it's used. Okay. And in this movie, it's misused by the Empire a lot. Yeah, the Force is like nuclear power, right? Yeah. It's like the ultimate tech, right? Like you could mm. theoretically say that nuclear power... I like you that. Know, Go with we that. All, if we all came together mm -hmm. and just decided that we're going to use this, we could... You know, free ourselves from fossil fuels and, you know, yeah. master cold fusion and then get off into space and then, like, do all the things that all of these books and all these movies say that we can do mm -hmm. or we can use it to just kill each other. Right. Whatever. <laughs> right. Like, you have the choice. Blow yeah, like that's, or nuke Japan. Yeah, like, yeah. that's that's all. But what's the difference? Yeah. Right, like, that's all. No, but what's the difference? It's not a ooh kind of statement. It's like, that's what the movie's trying to get you to think like, about, right? The, the and, parallel. And, and, you know, like, again, sorry prequel thing okay. if the Jedi if the Jedi like were like you know what like cause to me the the, the dark side or the Sith yeah. they weren't so exclusive with the force right mm -hmm. they were just like oh do you have a connection to it Mm -hmm. What would you like to do with it? Yeah. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, do you want to keep your loved ones and family alive forever? Then That's like, your that business. Him into yeah, but, way of yeah, but here's the thing, though. He wouldn't have backed himself into a corner if they just let him marry the girl he wanted to marry. Probably. Did they should. Maybe. Mm -hmm. They oh. no, yeah, they were like, no. They were like, that's well, not Well, the Jedi aren't allowed to fall in love. They're not allowed to get married. Anakin told Vader that he killed Palpatine. Yeah. Because, when the minute, because the minute you become attached to someone, you become vulnerable to be to the dark side. Well, too late. Well, like, it's the possession, right? I could yeah, lose yeah. something. I don't want to lose something. Um, same thing with the, I think, with the limbs and stuff. It's I've lost something, and I need to put it back there. Right? And... Uh, Luke uh, has it look like they, they look like normal hands, right? It isn't until uh, Return of the Jedi where it gets nicked, yeah. and then he is made to confront twice in that movie what's underneath the covering. Um, you know, there is some kind of contemplation in that with the losing of one's own humanity. The parallel between how technology is used, the power of something for energy being corrupted and used as a weapon. Right, like nuclear energy was in World War II with uh, Japan, but also then the threat of atomic desolation that had that continued from that point up until the present day. Um, you guys now do drills in schools for school shooters. Yeah. Your parents hit under desks from the atomic bomb. My dad. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like the generation before you. Yeah, but well, I'm not going to get into the other thing, but. Uh, like it's it it was a real fear culturally, and Alderaan looks a lot like Earth, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, right? Yeah, I think it's what it's based off of. 
good well, buzz. I mean, and I think that's for, I'm going to argue that that's for a point, that they want you to consider the de destructive impact misused technology can have, how it could not mean our salvation, it could mean the destruction of Demise. us and our planet, yeah. Okay, right now? Uh, the, the young lady behind you and then you. No, it's okay. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to keep it uh, evenly. Go ahead. I'm not sure it's a misuse of technology. Yeah. It, may, it may be more of a misuse of power. Sure. <clears throat> and the technology is just a tool to use for the power. Yeah, and I think te technology gets coded as something uh, that comes with the power in this movie, right? Like uh, the way everything uh, with the empire is depicted, right? It's, a, it's a, this technological dystopia. Everything's clean. Everything looks the same. Uh, the power, the destruction. I think they're getting like linked together. The rebels have like older stuff, yeah. right? Like all their ships seem like they're held together with band aids. Yes, they are. Yeah. yeah. They're like the old yeah. tech and new tech. But the lightsaber is old tech. The blaster is new tech. Um, there's that too. The don't be too hasty. You know, sometimes what you have is better. You know, sometimes the older thing is more reliable. Windows 95 was better than 98. <laughs> I don't know. Windows XP. Like I, yeah. Every other right. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's true. Right. Uh, Damn, no, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. I like it. Uh, <laughs> other thoughts? Yes, sir. So, um, I actually wonder about this. Like, how and like, I'm not saying like whole story verse, but like, with, uh, or let's say if it were in actual like good order, like one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever. Mm hmm I wonder if Star Wars would have been a completely like, different movie if Anakin never became Darth Vader and he just never went to the dark side and just, like, just stayed in the last time he came and went, or went with Obi-Wan. I wonder if, what would happen then? Like, would Star Wars be a completely different movie? Would Sue go the same path? Like, I would, like what would happen? Like, what would be the, the main thing mm -hmm. going on? No, that's good. And I think, yeah, it's going to be a different movie, absolutely. Uh, and considering those what-ifs is, like, a fun part of any history, whether it's yeah. fictional or real, right? What if this? What if that? That's good. Did you have a thought? No, I was just... You're just playing with your lightsaber? <laughs> put, don't put your eye out. Yes, sir. And, uh, the time period yeah, that the movies try. were filmed in does impact it. So if you look in mm -hmm. New Hope, where it's the the metaphors are to like Nazism and like older-style imperial societies, mm -hmm. whereas in the prequels, um, ignoring the midichlorians, the Senate is dissolved in a way where everybody starts backing this hugely uh, charismatic leader, which is coming out around the time of like uh, uh, the Iraq War. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a so lot of ways, lot the prequels of totally the prequels responds are, to that. Yeah. Um, uh, again, you can say American Revolution also, right? Like the rebels in the empire, right? The the British accents. You could even go. Uh, other other thoughts? Did I see a hand? No. Okay. Um, let's talk about the fear and how it's shown. And I think this scene is a really good example of what's scary. Uh, I think this is scarier for some reason than Alderaan blowing up because I think I know the characters. I see the characters who are in the situation, but uh, it's, again, in terms of the technology, it's not clear cut, it's not straightforward, and you'll see. Luke is very whiny in A New Hope. <laughs> he's very whiny. Uh, he's such a baby. <laughs> Uncle Owen. He's a kid that was on a farm. I wanted to go to Tashi yeah, Station. Yeah, like, hey. Oh. Um, he wasn't in the last Jedi as he was older. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's really what people, the problem people have with Luke in the last Jedi. Um, okay, so in this scene, we have technology, right, threatening to crush our characters. The trash compactor uh, is doing what it's designed to do, right? But the addition of humans is not something it can correct itself on. We have humans calling upon technology for assistance powerless to save themselves because of how dependent they have become on it. We have technology providing the salvation for those three characters. We have technology feeling bad when it th thinks it's failed. Um, so what's scary? What's this film trying to point out or show us? What do you think in terms of fear? Pull out of that for a second yeah. because of that scene right there with the stormtroopers. The head? I put they that in there for the you. They had the technology to fix that scene. Yeah. Why oh, did the they use the they technology left it to use that? that? Head on the and thing. so much so that they actually yeah. kept it in and added the sound effects of yeah. him hitting it. There's a really weird uh, <laughs> jump cut when Luke at first is training with the lightsaber on the Millennium Falcon and he mm -hmm. turns the lightsaber off and watching it again recently it was like, why did they leave that in? It, like you notice that it's a cut, right, when the lightsaber goes off. So similarly, yeah. Well that, yeah. I feel like that, 
it's also like just a cut. This, yeah. like I said, they had to add the foley to yeah. put the and noise of him hitting back. his head on there. I just... Okay, back to the <laughs> Well, <laughs> uh, they can't see what's right in front of them and how dangerous it is. I don't know. What do you think? Um, Explain the poor accuracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vi that, visibility is really bad in it. Well, then that's the technology of their... their supposed to, uh, mm -hmm. yes, they've got a tractor on the <laughs> Falcon. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to let them off the trip. Which, that's true, too. And I guess, if you think about it, you, you're, when they're in the trash compactor, like... You can think about it like this. I, I thought I was just thinking about it as like all the garbage and whatnot, disgusting stuff there. I thought that was just, you, you just think of it as just your old tech from like way back when in society. But actually, now I'm actually thinking about it even more. You can actually think about it as new tech. Because like, even if you're throwing away like old tech and using new tech, or maybe just like the new tech, throwing away the new tech and using and going back to old tech and then I guess making that old, I don't know. I'm trying to say this in like not the, the confusing way. It's like okay. Revamping old tech. Yeah, re yeah kind of like revamping old tech and then using that instead of your newer, like, mm -hmm. updated tech or whatever. Yeah, Luke uses his father's lightsaber, right? Uh, in the new movie, the broken lightsaber gets put back together and is being used. I'm saying that because I'm looking at it. Yes, yeah. sir. Well, along yeah. what you were just saying, like, Crazy. they just <laughs> flew a spaceship to a Death Star. Mm -hmm. They went in and had a gunfight, and they're about to get killed by a trash compactor. Right. So the fact like, that trash yeah, compactor really, still exists. Really, really yeah. 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 I can't. Well, right. So like, similarly in Wall-E, there's a scary trash compactor scene. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, I think, I, I think like mm -hmm. this scene just kind of leaves you like, I mean, as far as technology is concerned, like, even the trash compactor in this thing is so much bigger than the rest of the. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still a problem, and like, there's so many little technological traps throughout the whole movie, like, you know, especially if you live on Alderaan. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they've lived. But like, you know, like the, the trash compactor is really basic. It's mm -hmm. just something that squishes things. Mm -hmm. And of all the things they could have been killed by in this movie, it seems like that's the closest they got to death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, in a visceral sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, in a, like, I mean, obviously they were close to death at other times. Yeah. But that, that's kind of like, a, like you said, a non feeling death. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. in Alderaan. It's like six billion people died in Alderaan. It kind like of looked that. like Earth. And nobody cared. I mean, they cared a little bit, but. Obi Wan cared. A little. He felt it. For a second. <laughs> right, he felt it for a second. Continue your training and it'll be uh, fine. Uh, Go make me some blue tea. You said like it made you actually fear something. Yeah. It was just really the least technology. So like it just kind of... Yeah. It's weird how you try to kill off a character, but then just they survive or it's just a close to death situation. Right, of course. It's to provide tension in the movie yeah. and to make you feel that when we say edge of your seat kind of thing. Right, but they could have done that anyway. They could have had to get really close with a stormtrooper, you know, but we go to this scene, right? We go to... A trash compactor closing in. We go to those screams. The the wall passes past the camera at one point. You know, like that's a good camera trick. Yeah, it is. It's. I like that shot every time I see it. Um, other thoughts. And again, about anything. Yeah. Just, well, maybe the trash compactor was uh -huh. relatable because you couldn't, as a person watching the movie, you couldn't really envision yourself mm. being on a planet that gets blown to mm -hmm. screens. You can't really. You know, you can't really, laser mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't really envision that, but the trash compactor, everyone can sort of relate on a stomach-turning level to being crushed. Right, because our garbage machines do it. We've seen it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes, and then movies, we'll go here. Like these movies are very big Next. on not like on, on calling on other genres of film. Like that's a very traditional adventure. Like like that's mm -hmm. so Indiana Jones mm -hmm. oh, yeah. to be trapped. You know what I'm saying? Like the, this like is the the, uh, the pit, the lowest yeah, part of exactly. the circle. Yeah, the Death Star's a dungeon. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like like our heroes are in enemy territory, and this is the booby trap that could potentially kill them. Mm -hmm. And those are the kind of movies that they were making back then. Like even though this is you know dressed in chrome, mm -hmm. it's still at the end of the day like the big adventure blockbuster. So you're gonna need those stakes at some point. You're gonna need some kind of yeah. jump scare. Which was again in the same exact room, that pit thing mm -hmm. with the eyeball, and then they shoot yeah. it, and then they're just like, "Oh, you think we're done? Nope, Com you know, compressing walls and you know all that other kind of stuff." So yeah, they 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 managed to work in the other genre stuff into this, you know, it's fantasy, it's adventure, it's sci-fi, it's Star Wars. Mm -hmm. It's very Temple it. of Doom, also, yeah, right? There's that it. scene in what Temple of Doom too. Yeah, I think I have a fear of being crushed. I think that'd be a bad way to die. Uh, other thoughts? Um, so, like, just with Dr. Ball, like, when they're torturing her for information, like, that's just something 
that like because it's Talk something that you do that. Because uh, <laughs> doctors are not supposed to do harm. Yeah. There's a. It, it's almost like a horror shot in that scene with the, they do a, a extreme close up of the needle, the mm -hmm. syringe. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, and then the door just yeah. closes. Um, the R, yeah. what is it, R4 yes. unit that blows up, yeah. right, it starts it off. Um, and that's his daughter, too. That's so gross. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that at the time. Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> it's so <laughs> gross. His daughter. Uh, Death Star, Star oh. Destroyer is the names of their ships. Star. Right? <laughs> the idea that these are like coded negatively right from their inception. Um, to strike fear into the chaotic regions of the galaxy. How are you going to keep control in the outer provinces? Uh, fear will keep control. Fear of this station. Fear of the power that fear it has. Of the it's like, how yeah. does Tarkin still blow up the Alderaan? It's like, even with, with if Tarkin, like, even if Leia gave the information or not to um, Tarkin, then he would have done the same thing as he always said, like, no matter what. Like, mm -hmm. if it was like, if, like no matter what, he would still blow up all wrong. Cause like he would just like he, he would just want Leia to be crushed and like lose all those people and like mm -hmm. feel empty and stuff. Yeah, cause it's yeah. Uh, it's about ruling through fear, yeah. right? Um, absolutely. Well, about sure. You know, I'm piggybacking. I'm I'm about to switch franchises here. <laughs> it's late in the evening. I'm just pointing that out to everybody. Go I ahead. Know, I know. <laughs> I'd like to watch the Death Star blow up. Okay. So Go ahead. No, no, no. Please tell us. Spoilers! It's, it's, it's a reference to the new Star Trek films. Yeah. The 2009 reboot. When mm -hmm. Nero, Eric Bana, his villain, sucked Vulcan into a black hole. He mm -hmm. wanted Spock to feel ang to feel empty inside because, mm -hmm. for God's sakes, the guy lost his mom right before she was about to be beamed up onto the Enterprise and the whole planet got sucked and... Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, <coughs> that's no. kind of like piggybacking what... This guy just said so. And despite like uh, the world, uh, the universe of the Federation and Star Trek being a technological utopia, right? There's a lot of scary technology in both the the shows and and all of the different movies, the different like iterations. Yeah, and I could ca I could go for like maybe a century, maybe the right to the 24th century mm -hmm. about how the sci-fi democracy in Star Trek and the Sci-fi democracy in prequels. Bear with me here. <laughs> they both probably failed at, during times of conflict, but mm -hmm. thankfully we do not have the time for that. Something you see in the newer uh, Star Trek movie, uh, Star yeah, Star Trek movies is the it's making the audience consider like, what if the Federation is the bad guy, right? Which is something that is absent from the original series, most of the Next Generation. It isn't until you get to. Insurgents, no, insurrection. Yes. And you get to insurrection, it's pretty clear where it's like, these people you thought you could trust the whole time, the Federation, they're not so great. You could trust no one. Um, Bad writing. Yeah. Okay, Steer swerving back from Star Trek. Yes, please, Although please. someday yeah. Disney will own them too. Star you know? Trek, yeah. Disney will own everything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, all right. Uh, go ahead, because I want to, yeah, like I said, I think we should talk about the hope of humanity I that's in these films. Star. But was there a hand? Do you want it? You sure? Please? No, it was on Star Trek. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, there's a lot of labels. Well, I'm really glad. Just go to the home. Really okay. Uh, I'm going to show you two scenes. Uh, I'm going to show you. They're both part of the assault on the Death Star. Um, about two minutes each. Now, again, right? There's probably better uh, scenes from the assault to watch, right? But I, I show you the beginning of the assault for a reason, right? Because the rebellion is very different from the Empire in terms of what it's made up of, right, in terms of the individuals that are on both sides and how the movie chooses to show them to us. And then, here's the other scene. There was a, um, I don't know, like a satirical uh, like newspaper or like article that was written at one point, and it was like, uh, the propaganda that kind of would have went around with like Obi Vader killing Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's yeah. like terrorist leader Obi-Wan Kenobi finally brought to justice. Uh, you know, it talks about the, like, and again, if you think about the other side, how, how it might be seen. Like the clerk scene. Uh, yeah, yeah, like the clerk scene, like, again, like, that whole thinking through, like, what we see happening, I think is important. Uh, same thing in The Matrix, though. Remember we brought that up with The Matrix, like, so they're murdering all these innocent people yes. right now? Right, yeah. 
Yes. You know, and it's like these people are just following orders, maybe, or just doing their job, just doing construction, yeah. especially yeah, in return. Yeah, yeah, All right. Sure. Sure. So this is a new hope, right? And you know, what's the new hope? Oh, Luke's the new hope, or whatever. But I want you to think about uh, what this is saying about like the hope for humanity in connection to what we've said with technology and how it's being used and the dangers of it. I want you to perhaps think about the individualism that they show that's important and the problem solving skills, right? What do you think? Well, I, I think yeah. that at the end, like, again, like it's not what I was saying before, yeah, like, go ahead. knowledge and wisdom stuff, like all the power in the world, Luke shuts off his only technology to take the shot using like sort of like, and I was just saying like when we were watching it, he's, he's kind of hovering. Mm -hmm. and it makes it really soft and kind of, he's not like staying still. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of balancing and he's just sort of going by feel and his own instincts rather. And that shows that like that's, can be more important than technology. Sure. No matter how advanced it gets, because yeah. he ends up destroying the largest technology piece in the movie without using any. And Except earlier in the, the scene, the he has. Yeah. the ship he has. Yeah. All right, yeah. Earlier in the scene, though, uh, we have another uh, rebel pilot who misses the shot, right? And when he's, he's using, using the targeting computer. Yes. Interesting fun fact, 18 months after this movie, Moonraker will come out and will have the, almost the exact same finale, with James Bond needing to shoot down a missile in a spaceship and turning off the targeting computer. And everybody wanted to get on the Star Wars bandwagon. Yes. <laughs> but yes. they did do a very good thinking. job of the, yeah. the graphics. Oh, I'm not saying Moon, Moonraker's a good movie. Although, if you want to think about technology in that movie, there's a boat that turns into a car that turns into a plane. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Yes. Uh, well, I'm going to link back to something that I said in Jurassic World. Okay. Why does the fat guy always have to die? Yeah. And, but the thing is, is that half of the time they have like a really fat guy esque name. Mm -hmm. Porkins? Porkins, yeah. Why do you have to make fun of him for being fat and then kill him off because he's fat? Mm -hmm. It's just like it's a stereotype in movies. You have to kill off the fat guy. And I remember the one the pilots when they were actually mentioning exactly like Rogue One. I don't know if it's Rogue One or an older a Star Wars story movie that like one of these older. Or like pil or rebel pilots, um, they were like mentioned or something. Like I was like, mm -hmm. I was think, I think it was probably Rogue One. They were like probably mentioned because like they were, they died or something. I, I can't remember. Yeah. Probably, like the original Red Five. Yeah. yeah. I think it, I, I think yeah. it was probably. Yeah. They strangled Jabba too. They strangle Jabba. They do. Mm -hmm. And he was just a, a gangster trying to make a living. Oh, yeah. You know, get rich or die trying. What? What? <laughs> In the Clone Wars, he's got a son. A private interest. Um, okay, so, all right, you guys, you guys have thoughts about blowing up the Death Star, but what about Porkins and the other rebel pilots and how that scene plays out and how we're showing them? But what were you going to say? This well, I was going to say there's also the hope factor of redemption, too, because yeah. I guess if, you're, if we go back to Star Wars version one where yeah. Han shoots first, yeah. this is the part where he saves everybody. Yeah, he comes this back. This is the scene that, that completes his arc in the movie. So mm -hmm. he has a nice single movie arc. And so that also shows that hope for, like, no matter how much of a criminal you may have been when faced with, like, a tough situation, you like right Darth Vader, you, you might, there are people that can come through and do the right thing, and, like, as opposed to just being, paying off, you know, John yeah. to see, which is what he could have been doing. Yeah, because so Luke's they, they wanted to like be, a double, yeah. A double hope, you know. That's true. That's, that's a more traditional story arc. And he's got more of that arc than Luke does, you could say, right? Because Luke, yeah, definitely. he's doing it for a personal reason, right? The uh, Empire killed my family, they killed this old man I met for a couple days. Um, Han, he's, right. he's Han like, I'm not a party or war, I want to go... He's a journey. Yeah. Han has an arc. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. What if, like, like Han, like, bullets, like, it actually fired, like, missiles to the global Death Star, and Luke just thought that was the force from his, him and his, like, ship that blew up Death These are toys. Yeah. Those are action figures. Oh, um, no, 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 I was, I was pointing something else out. I think, uh, think of, a, yeah, go ahead. No? Oh, well, then we'll finish with that. Well, no, I mean, stormtroopers all look the same. We kind of said that earlier. Um, I gave you the toy, Luke and Han, because uh, that's what separates them, right? As soon as they get in, off come the helmets, right? Revealing the individual underneath. Uh, with the whole rogue squadron coming out, uh, they all have got names and faces. You know Porkins because the film tells you that's his name, right? Um, they establish these characters, establish connections with Those them, they don't call kill them. them. Yeah, they do. In the movie? Yeah. yeah. How do we? Why do we call him Porkins then? Because Canada. Internet. But what does yeah. can? Where does Canada come from? 
Yes, but no, they, they, yeah, watch it. Yeah, watch it. He's called Porkins. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 what is it, Biggs or is it Lars? And the, uh, Biggs, 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 right? Biggs, Wedge, Wedge, right? Yeah. Like. Well, Biggs, they show like kind of a moment with Luke. Yeah, he's got the mustache. He's the one with the mustache. Was that Tatooine? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Originally, was that added? That was original. That was the original. I mean, it's hard for me. Yeah, well, I guess it was in the original. <laughs> yeah. I never saw, I the, never original. saw the original. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Uh, Thought? Because I just watched. Yeah, I think it's just great that the good guys have facial hair in this. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, it's very true. Well, also, their yeah. squadrons are the red and the gold squadron. Uh -huh. There's colors? blue. There's blue, yeah, and they all got colors. Yeah, but, but whose colors were red and gold? Whose colors were red and gold? So Iron Man? Russia. <laughs> Who? <laughs> oh, via Russia. Do so you think it's a movie about communism secretly? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know what the republic's like policies were enough, really. But maybe this is how democracy dies. I saw your sign, producer lady. I saw your sign. Um, she, I'm getting the wrap up uh, signal. So, uh, in conclusion, um, I, I think we heard a lot of really important ideas. Go ahead, share it. This is going to be a final thought, so go ahead. Well, I just, uh, as a final kind of Please. bring up, uh, it just kind of, for, I don't know who has seen the original cuts. Yeah. And who hasn't? Who's seen the originals? Maybe. I don't even know. If, it, if there's a lot of crap on Tatooine, it's not the original. If Han shot first, it's not the original. If it looks really busy. I think I can know the difference. Yes. Right. I can't really yeah. But that just kind of ties into, like, well, would, given the technology's changing and stuff like that, yeah. is it okay for directors and filmmakers to go back and change something that's already been created? Thank you. That's my whole point tonight. I want you to think about, like, just like we see technology in the movie, is that's what's going on with this film as a film, too, right? Like, it keeps getting meddled with made better and more advanced, and is that just a scary, slippery slope? That yeah. And also tying in with the whole fact that George Lucas kind of, he loves secluded money. Secluded the original ones and doesn't want the originals. Because yeah. it, it's one thing, like, you have a remake, I, uh, I mean, a, a remaster or yeah. a director's cut. Right, sure. You have the original two mm -hmm. players. To keep them coexisting, is, it, that I feel like is okay to do then. Yeah. But to, like, just lock it But to away. hold that rest yeah. of it ransom from the rest of the world, I yeah. think, is there's something unethical about that. <laughs> I just thought that the, the, the F5 and 6 were, were tokens as well, but apparently I was. Uh, they were directed by Kasdan. Lawrence Kasdan directed uh, those no. two movies. Uh, no, he, Irving Kirshner directed Empire. You're right. Thank you. Kasdan Richard did the Marquand. return. No. no? He just did the screenplay. Okay. Richard Marquand directed. Jedi. It's been a long day. I've been up since six. It's fair. Um, yeah, uh, uh, editing sta saved A New Hope in a lot of ways. It was a very different movie when George Lucas uh, filmed it, and other people having a hand in it uh, could what could the movie could have been very different if we hadn't. It would have been probably more in line with the prequels, where where it feels like no one was telling George Lucas no. Um, you need those checks and balances. Too much power, you know. Which is we had kind of the whole thing with the technology and the force. In this movie. I know you're trying to wrap it up. I know she's trying to wrap it up. It's the ultimate balance in that. Uh, all right. And now you're trying to make. We said final thoughts. I'll stick to final thoughts. Thank you guys for coming and being a part of this. Um, so, uh, really quickly, here's my my internal conflict right now. Uh, so here, look. Um, no, wait. Hold on. So here's. Let me explain my internal conflict. Um, we. I made these slides. Uh, had conversations with some people before this uh, began. Uh, before the class began tonight, and in the course of those conversations, it was like, oh, we should do this next week instead. Uh, and I never changed the slides. So in fairness, uh, we can, for the next 30 seconds, uh, throw out an idea and see if people are into it. And if we can't come to some kind of consensus, I'll tell you what I was thinking. Hellboy. Or <laughs> vice versa. Endgame. Um, Endgame. It's too soon for Endgame. I'd like to do something where we could talk about technology in some way. I think you, if you can get really creative with what that means, though, um, her. Or Black Panther? Oh, yeah, Black Panther was really good. Yeah. Yes? I saw for your original, you, your original thought as yeah. of uh, 6 p.m. this evening. What was the result? I don't even know. All right, let me tell you what my original thought was. Because um, I already I foreshadowed it earlier. Um, I said, uh, I made a several atomic bomb references. I talked about Japan a couple times. And my suggestion was, but hear me out. Which one? We would watch Gojira 
and we would watch it with English subtitles. Uh, yes. Because the American release is a different movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the mm -hmm. original Godzilla is very anti-American. Mm -hmm. It's also, it's, it's, it's uh, didactic in terms of what it's trying to teach about being the mad scientist and what that responsibility should look like. Um, and weapons and technology and atomic bombs. So that was what I threw out, which kind of people were like, yeah. But uh, we're a class and we're in this together and I don't want to pretend like I'm driving the bus because like, I'm only doing it part time. Uh, that was an Indiana Jones reference, but a bad Indiana Jones reference. Uh, the one with the CGI monkeys. He's, he, You're a teacher? Part time. Yeah, that's all. What do you guys think? You want to do go, 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 original Godzilla or would you? Whatever. It's either original Godzilla or Gojira in English subtitles? Yeah, it, it was. No, 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 no. It's Gojira with English subtitles, and I'll put it on my Google Drive, and if you get your email, I'll share it with you so you don't have to find it. Okay, uh, watch Godzilla. If you end up watching a different Godzilla by mistake, that's okay. It might make the conversation interesting. If, if you you give LMC your contact info, I will make sure I put the movie on my Google Drive and share it and make it available to you.